Fishing remote places, um, 50 something years. Uh, never saw anything that would make me believe that there was anything out there uh, like a lot of people are. You know, hey, I've hunted for years. Uh, I had an uncle. Uh, one time we went fishing. He stayed up all night with his 44 mag on his hip and uh, Winchester rifle. We were fishing, but he was loaded for bear. And he told my older brother, don't go out in the woods. There's things out there that, that exist that you have no idea of. Be careful. He never told me. He just, I guess I was younger and had my older brother looking after me. The bottom line is, folks, I was out there for decades of mature adult life. Never had anything remotely made me think that anything like that existed. Well, 2003, uh, my son at that time was 15 years old. We were on Rowlett Creek about 25 miles from downtown Dallas. If you're familiar with the East Trinity River, uh, a lot of heavy wooded areas, river bottom, but very well populated. And uh, we were out there fishing. We had uh, catfish stink bait on the bottom. We had minnows under a cork. We were throwing lures. Whatever was coming through, we wanted to catch it. And it was like after midnight, I'm sitting there in the folding chair right up against the creek. Creek's about 60 feet wide. Had a little uh, a side slough running perpendicular into the creek and we were kind of sitting there on that apex, that point. So there was water on two sides. Uh, an open parking area and then a low water bridge to our south. I'm sitting there and it was sometime after midnight I began to notice across this side slough just activity. It started from a distance and then every now and then maybe a crackle of leaves, uh, a swishing. I could tell something was moving along the creek bank, creek bank and it was moving towards us. And I wasn't concerned, folks. I mean, you got armadillo, you've got coyotes, you've got a lot of stuff out there. They forage at night. They're no threat to you, and I, I didn't pay it any mind. And at some point, I began to get this distinct feeling of being watched. I don't know where it originates. I know my grandmother was full blood Cherokee. My grandfather was mixed blood tribal member. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the white sheet of the family. My, <laughs> my sisters and brothers are a lot darker than me. I took after my dad, the Scots-Irish and a pinch of German in me. But uh, uh, I, I know when I'm being watched and I got a little uncomfortable. That was the first thing I noticed. And then at some point, I heard the very distinct snap of a, a pretty good sized branch breaking from being stepped on. I can tell you folks, dogs and light-footed animals don't crush and snap twigs. And, and my level of alertness perked up a little and my son, we were just fishing, having a good time, caught a few throwbacks. I looked over in the direction of the sound and uh, decided to get up. I put my pole down. I walked over to the pickup got my Q-beam out, and I just started scanning the brush line across that side slough. I'm going to estimate anywhere from 60 to 75 feet away. And as I'm panning, just casually curious, I momentarily saw a facial shape. And that wasn't sticking out of the brush, but I mean, the penetrating light caught the, the, the sh a face, uh, you know, shape of a face. And I was going so fast that I kind of passed it. Well, when I snapped the light back, I couldn't focus and find what I just momentarily saw. And my son saw me jerk. He goes, Dad, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm just, I'm just looking, son. You know, I didn't want to, he was 15 years old. I didn't want to, oh, there's something out there. You know, I just casually put the light down. I said, ah, just looking. I got back in my chair and I was like, two feet back from a sharp drop off on that side of the creek. Uh, not more than 10 minutes, probably less than five, a cinder block size object come looping out of that brush line and it hit the water less than 10 feet from me. It looked like a 50 pound child doing a cannonball off the high dive. I'm not talking about a little splash, I'm talking about a whoosh. And I mean the water shot up I fell back in my folding chair and 
turned and there was big drops splattering down. My son had already dropped his pole and was up against me like a leech, yelling with eyes big as plates, saying, what was that, Dad? What was that? And I'm pulling him back, watching these waves fan out. I knew immediately, folks, if something that big would have hit either one of us, it, it, it could have busted us up, seriously injured us, or killed us. I mean, it scared me. You know? And I backed up, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to digest what just happened, and then anger set in that somebody was jacking with us, messing with us. And I don't like big objects coming that close, so I raced over, feeling threatened, uh, pulled my 357 out of the truck, and I yelled over into that brush line. I said, look, I don't know who you are, but if you throw something big like that again, I may just fire back. And I was still angry. I was still upset. We hadn't been bothering anybody out there. I went over to the side slough, and, and I wasn't acting law enforcement. I probably wouldn't have done it. I was retired by then, so I had a little bit of slack. I aimed the gun down into a real soft mud area. I plugged one ear with the other hand, cracked it back single action, and I blasted around down into the, the, the creek bottom. Immediately, on the other side of that slough, uh, if you've hunted deer or a big animal and you spook it, that thing sounded like a baby bulldozer. There was, you know, berry and bush, it was thick. It would have taken me a hard, long time to even probably make 100 yards through it. This thing cleared 100 yards and kept on going in a matter of seconds. You could hear the branches breaking very big mass taking off and my son looked at me he goes dad what was that i said i don't know but let's go <laughs> you know uh, it took me a while to digest i mean i talked with people i said what could that have been you know i mean what animal that picked something up and whatever hit didn't float so it could have been a concrete block i just remember seeing it looping out of my peripheral vision with the lantern uh, at that point, folks, uh, I began to, to seek answers. Um, I had been uh, 22 years with the city of Houston, retired as an arson investigator. I was working for a major insurance, insurance concern in their special investigations unit as a fire and explosion expert. Uh, I kind of toyed with the idea for a while and I began to interview people. And early in my interest, uh, I shared with Troy. Uh, I had stumbled across a story on the BFRO website of two fishermen having a similar experience. Uh, I had talked with other agencies. They said, oh no, Rick, that's too close to Dallas. There, no, that possibility. But when I talked to Troy, he said, you know, as a matter of fact, they're not published, but we have reports of activity there. Um, I teamed up with Troy. We did, uh, some studies of that waterway system. Long story short, I had my first visual sighting there and uh, it was the training and kind of the leadership of Troy. He taught me a whole lot of stuff. And uh, during the last several years, uh, I've photographed, I've, I've obtained videos. Now, don't get me wrong, folks, they're not gonna come out and pose for a family picture, okay? Or come out and tap dance out of the brush. They're very, elusive but if you know what to look for and where uh you can I, I couldn't you know i couldn't guarantee you you know we could go out and find it but i've learned a lot from troy he's very knowledgeable and uh i'm not gonna make this commercial but i'm selling tapes <laughs> and pictures i'll be under the the tent roof there tomorrow and uh i just there's a whole lot else I could tell. I just want to tell you how I got interested. It wasn't something I was looking for. Something came along, and I do understand that there are people here that have had experiences and are kind of looking for answers. They don't want to be called a nut or a wacko, although there's a lot that follow the Bigfoot. I'm going to be honest with you. There's some crazy people follow this. But there are some very honest, sincere people just looking for answers. And I hope somewhere along the line you get what you're looking for, RC. Have a great night.